every Sunday morning we, 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 we come here for two hours or more and we sit here and then we get up and go home and my question is what's the use if we are not serious about our relationship with God and we are not serious about our commitment to the cause what's the use why we we, we, we do this stuff every day and when there were others you know when you on your way to church you meet folk leaving and I sometimes I come out here on Sunday morning and I, I see people going about their own business and I go to the car wash and I see folks at the car wash with jeans and tennis shoes and with no mind at all to attend a church in a while and I say to myself why don't these folks go to church and, and then but I, my mind revert back to why I mean if nothing's going to happen at church and then they're doing the right thing why should they go if it's all for naught so I, I thought that I would look at this for a minute if y'all pray with me about why should we go to we go to church but what ought to be our reason our purpose uh, for going to church I mean, just to be in out of the cold, just to make sure you see your buddy, that you see your church crony, your best friend, or did you get an outfit that you just want everybody to see, and this is the easy way uh, to exploit what you are wearing, and, and, uh, or did you want it to tell somebody off, and you didn't want to call them on the phone, just feel like you would catch them at church, and, uh, or maybe you wanted to see what somebody else was wearing. Just to see that are they wearing the same thing they wore two weeks ago? Because you pay some attention, you know, you know. And otherwise, why? Why do we? Why do, why do we come here? And I looked at what I just said, and I'll be done in a minute. He, when he, he said, he said that. In, in other words, it, it sounded to me like he was saying, I, you know, I was doing the same thing that some of you guys were doing. I was coming to church every Sunday. I don't remember the date, and I don't remember the year, but up until that time, I was just going through the motion. But all of a sudden, the year that King Uzzi died, and then it looked like things started changing for me. And it got different. I'm not saying that Uzzi death had anything to do with it, but I just it's just a landmark. I remember it that it was the same year that us I died, and then I figure out on that, and I figure out on that day and that year why it was important to go to church. And if you don't mind, I want to share with you today about why should we go to church. Look what he said. He said it was the year that King us I died that I saw the Lord. And the first thing I want to say to you is that when you go to church. You ought to come to church to see God. Not to see me, not to see the preacher, not to see your neighbor, not to see your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your sweetheart, or your crony, your sidekick, or your ace boom coon, or see what's about. You ought to come to church to see the to see the Lord. He said, I saw God. I'm not talking about seeing God with your physical eyes. With, uh, with, with, uh, with your physical vision with the retina but he said I saw God like I never have seen him before the year King Uzzah died in my mental vision in my spiritual vision I was able to see God and when I saw him he was all over the place Christians ought to come to church to see God See God, you can you can see him because it, it, what what it really is, it got, what it reason why it's so much about God because it really is a divine love affair yeah. that we have with God. I didn't say it. The Bible said He is the groom and we are the bride. It's a spiritual love affair. Yeah. Uh, it's a divine intercourse that when we come to church, we we come to church to to to, to see God and to have a relationship. I wish somebody knew what I was talking about. With God. We, we come to church to get together. And that's why if you're going to, it's a divine romance. 
So if you're going to romance God, and then your mind ought to be on him and nothing else. I mean, come on, help me. Don't, now, keep it real. Don't try to play with the brother here. You don't want to be nobody. You don't want to romance nobody, and they got their mind on somebody else. I mean, some of y'all be ready to kill somebody if they romancing you and they call somebody else a name. Your name is Mary, and they talking about, and I really love you. I mean, if you don't like it, then why would you think God like it? If you come to romance God, then, then all your attention ought to be on the one that you come to romance. And that's what church is about. It's that you got to bring your mind in. You got to pull everything in. When you get church, you got to pull everything into one little small space. And say, I need to think about God right now. There's some more stuff that I need to think about when I leave here. I need to think about how I'm going to pay my bills. I need to think about what I'm going to do with that, that mom kids of mine. What I'm going to do with that husband and that wife. What I'm going to do with my family. It's okay to think about that later, but when you get here, your purpose all to be able to see God and to initiate a relationship with God. And that's why, this is why some of y'all leave the church and say, I didn't feel it today because you didn't do nothing. I, I didn't get it today. You didn't give anything. Huh? Come on, help me here, man. Like, we want God to do all the work. <laughs> I mean, come on. If you want God to make you feel good, then you need to try to make him feel good. I wish somebody knew what I was talking about. Come on. I know they ain't over all y'all here. Y'all understand what I'm talking about. You got to be willing to give up yourself to him if you want him to give up himself to you. He said, the year that King Uzzah died, I found the sowing. And this man, his, his train filled the temple. He was all over the church. I saw him with my spiritual vision. I saw, I saw the Lord. And when I saw him, we got together. He and I got together. And when I left church, I was satisfied. And I believe he was satisfied with what I did while I was at church. And I want to ask you today that if you leave here today, God Almighty, how many? I want to ask you this. It's a rhetorical question. You got to answer this. But I want to ask you something. When you leave here today, I want you to ask yourself, will God satisfied with my worship today? When, when you leave, when you get in your car in the parking lot, I want you to ask yourself, did I make God happy today? Was God satisfied with my worship? Today? I don't want to be loving on my wife and she looking at somebody else. I mean, I'm trying to get some sugar and you looking at another man. God wants you to pay all attention to him. He is the one trying to romance you. Can y'all feel this? The year that King Uzzah died, I saw him. I saw him. It's important. One purpose, Captain Church Chairman, is that you got to come to see God. When you get out of your car, y'all say, I'm coming looking for him today. I'm going to see God today. I'm not, I'm not gonna see. I'm not gonna see Brother Morris. I'm not gonna see Mother Swanson. They, I, they might pass through. They might be a passerby, but I ain't coming looking for them. I might see them, but that ain't who I'm looking for. Uh, today, when I get to church, sometime before I leave, I'm gonna see the Lord, and, and we're gonna have some communication. There's gonna be some touching going on. You should see him, and then when you. When you see him, and this is a good thing about when you see the Lord, I'm almost done. I promise. Because when you see him, you will see you. The reason why you can't see who you are, because you never saw who he is. He said, the year that King Uzzah died, I saw the Lord, and then when I saw the Lord, I said, oh man. Mm. 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 Look at verse 5. Well, I'll just read it to you. After he saw the Lord, then said I, woe is me. 
I ain't never said that about myself before. All these years while I was living, I never said, woe is me. Now, since I've, I've seen him, woe is me. I didn't know I was this terrible. I didn't know I was this dirty. I didn't know I was this much of an obnoxious person, a bad, irritating person that nobody... I love myself, but I didn't know other folk hated me. Because you are not going to see yourself. You probably would be surprised of how many folks in church that don't know themselves. When you go to church, it is designed for God to introduce you to you. <laughs> now, come on, help me here a minute. And when you see God, you'll see yourself. Now, I know you saw yourself this morning. Somebody else said, well, I saw myself this morning in the mirror. Matter of fact, I saw myself about 15 times before I left at the house. I want to make sure myself was looking good. I saw myself. No, you saw the, what you believed to be the best of you. And you saw what you were looking for. You thought you was cute. You looked in the mirror, you was cute. <laughs> you thought you were clean and swapped out. Then when you looked in the mirror, you were right, according to you. Now, come on, help me here, man. I ain't talking about that person you saw in the mirror. There's another individual that you ain't even seen yet. And you won't see that one until you see the Lord because the Lord will shine the light on the real you. You said the year that King Uzzah died, I saw the Lord. Then when I saw the Lord, I saw me. See, what God will make you do, he will make you look at yourself from a critical perspective. He will make you critique yourself. Now, we critique others, but we don't critique ourselves. What kind of person you are? I'm all right. You heard me say this a thousand times before, but I think it's worth saying again. And no, I'm not going to even charge you for it this time. <laughs> and I've been pastoring for almost 40 years. Dang, I'm old. almost 40 years and I'm still waiting I'm somebody come to my office and say I want to talk to you doc I'm messy I am a handful I can't get along with nobody I don't like nobody you want to know what's going on in the choir me. <laughs> you know why the group don't got I'm having they having so many problems? Because I am the problem. I'm the problem. I'm yet for something. I'm still waiting. I'm waiting with great anticipation for somebody to come to my order and fess up. <laughs> Stop by next week. I'll be in. Just fess up and say it's me. But the reason why you would never say that because you have never seen the real you because when you come to church, you don't look to see God. See, the first thing when God saved you, the first thing he showed you is you. Y'all ain't gonna pray with me, are you? Remember I told you about the art critic? <laughs> that walked in the art store and left the glasses at home and was looking at what he thought was a picture and talking about how ugly it was. And he wasn't looking at the good on the picture. He was being, he was, a, he was an art critic, so he was critiquing the picture or what he thought was a picture. He said, man, who in the devil drew this? This has got to be the ugly picture I ever seen. You know? Look at them big ears and big nose. Why would somebody draw your wife tapping on the shoulder and say, baby, that's a mirror you look at here. That's yourself. He had no idea he was looking at himself. Isn't it funny how sin look worse on other folk than it do on us? I told y'all this, but don't shout mess today now. This is a pastor on your message. I saw the Lord, and then I saw my self. I saw me. He said this. I ain't making it up. It's right there. When I saw the Lord, he said, woe is me. 
I am a man of unclean lips. I swear more than anybody. The man I curse so much, I didn't know I was cursing. I thought it was the way I talked. I got unclean lips. Now, crazy, crazy to me and normal now. When I say the Lord prayer, I say a curse word in it because I talk about the norm in my vocabulary. You know. It reminds me of a story I heard about a preacher and the deacon was fishing. And they said, every, every time the deacon hang a big figure on the hook, he dropped back, he would curse. And the preacher said, Don't curse. Uh, just said, God bless me. And pulled two or three more big fish and it fell off, cursed again. The preacher said, Don't, don't curse. Just said, God bless. The preacher went around and hung a big fish. And it fell off the hook. He looked up at the deacon. The deacon looked at him and said, Preacher, I know you ain't going to curse, but you got to admit something ought to be said about that. <laughs> Sometimes it's just who you are. It's just what you, I, I've, I've seen people say things that they didn't know they said it. I didn't say that. I know y'all gonna say I say stuff that I didn't know I said. I, you know, I ain't talking about me. I'm talking about y'all now. I'm trying to turn this around on me. <laughs> I saw. He saw himself. He saw himself. He said, "Woe is me! Woe is me!" When you start turning around and start looking at yourself. When you start checking yourself, if everybody in here would just correct themselves, no, nobody else would never have to correct you. If you say, woe is me, let's stand in the need of prayer, not my mother, not my brother, not my sister, it's me, oh Lord, that need to change. I'm gone. Why did we come to church? To see God. Have you seen God today? And then, not only to see God, but you come so that he can let you see yourself or yourselves. And then, the last thing he says, that not only do I got an unclean lip, but I'm around people. So you see God, you see you, and then when you see yourself and see God, then you're able to adequately and correctly see others. <laughs> the, the reason that you got such a bad... Uh, opinion about others because you have not seen them yet. If you can see them the way you see you, you'll have more sympathy for them. I wish I had somebody pray with me. Right you ought to be able to understand other folks' shortcomings by your own shortcomings. He said, the year that King Us I died, I saw myself and I'm a, I realized that I had unclean lips and I'm around people with unclean lips. The reason why I'm so negative and so Bad and reason why I swear so much, like everybody I hang around be swearing. It's hard to get well when everybody around you sick. <laughs> I remember when now home, you know, come from a big family, thirteen kids, and we. I remember when all of us were living in the same house, all thirteen kids, all fifteen people, mom and dad, thirteen kids, four bedroom house. Don't explain. Don't ask me to explain how I did it. How we did it is all I know. All I know, I was in the house with 14 other people. But when one person caught a, one person caught a cold, everybody caught a cold. And then it was hard to get rid of it because when you start getting rid of yours, somebody else got it. And when you thought it was gone, you just caught it down from somebody else. So it's hard to get better with the folks behind you, around you sick. And so that's why maybe you, start, you need to start watching who you hang out with. I am how you say birds or feathers like to you. You don't see turkeys hanging out with eagles. Let me get a drink behind that one. If you want to fly with the eagle, then you got to leave the turkeys alone. It's the people around. Somebody has to get well. And you ought to start with the man or the woman in the mirror. Somebody got to get well first so that others can get well. Sometimes when you think about who you are, you need to look around about who you hang out with. I'm not blaming them for your behavior, 
But your behavior is not going to improve if their behavior is no better than your behavior. Or your behavior is no better than their behavior. If everybody behaving the same way, it's hard for anybody to change their behavior. I mean, look at the preachers that I have to be around. Should I say anything else about that? <laughs> that the friends I hang out with, McAfee, <laughs> Bethel, <laughs> and Lord help me, my cousin in St. Paul. <laughs> Don't y'all play this on the radio? <laughs> Make sure y'all don't put this on radio now. You guys be, you guys be looking for me. <laughs> what he's simply saying is that before I saw the Lord, I didn't think nothing was wrong with the folks that I hung out with because I didn't think anything was wrong with me. But when I saw the Lord, I saw me, then I saw them. And what I discovered was they either need to change and I need to change or we need to stop hanging out together. Can y'all get this? Sometimes you got to tell phone, you need to change or I'm going to stop hanging out with you. But I'm changing first. It's starting with me. Charity starts at home. You got to do it first. When you come to church, you come, you come to see God and to see yourself. How many of y'all have ever seen your real you? And you looked in the mirror and said, I don't like. I don't like myself. Sometimes you have to make you somebody else. Have you ever tried this? Have you ever just attached somebody else's name to you? made yourself somebody else and said, what if somebody else had done this? What if so-and-so had done this? How would it have looked? Because sometimes it's hard to turn our eyes around and see ourselves because I know y'all just like me. You look in the mirror, you look for the best thing. I'll be looking for my positive spots. I'm looking in the mirror. I'm going, I ain't looking for nothing negative. I'm looking for everything positive. I'm looking Good side right there. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's a, you know. Critique ourselves and you need to be fair and honest with you. Sometimes you need to just tell yourself that you're not a good person. Look at your track record. Look at your behavior. Sometimes you have to tell yourself, I'm not a good person. Or I have not been a good person. I need to change. I need to do something different. Yeah. Can't keep going on like this. The church of God is like a hospital. It is full of sick folks. I got to go. It is full of sick people. And you should not be surprised when you see sick folks in a hospital. You stupid. If you go to the hospital. <laughs> what did I say? What did I say? Oh. I didn't say that. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I don't care what y'all say. But you out of your mind if you okay. if you go to a hospital and you see a hot bed full of sick folk and you up there talking about what are these sick folk doing? Here? I remember when I was in the hospital years ago. One of my friends walked in the room and said, "What you doing here? Sick? I mean, I'm not playing basketball. I'm, I'm sick. That's why I'm doing here." 
hospital because sick people belong where? In the hospital. And so when you're spiritually sick, this is the hospital. And this is where you come to get well. You should not be surprised when people are not what you think they ought to be. You know, I heard many people will say sometimes, they will say, well, you call yourself a Christian. You call yourself saved and look at uh, some of the things uh, that you do. Sometimes they'll call us hypocrites. Oh, because we go to church and uh, and we still uh, do wrong. But uh, I don't know about you today. I don't come to church because uh, I am uh, perfect. I do not come to church because um, uh, I'm well. But um, I come to change because I am a, a sick man. And uh, I come to change because um, I needed to be treated. So today, I still say, it was the year the king of the dead that I saw the Lord and his train now he said it filled it filled the temple I don't know about about you tonight but I want to uh, to come to church to see God. You are all right. You look all right. But I'm not coming here to see you. But I'm here. I wish I had a witness. Because I want to see God. I remember when I... Jesus and his disciples. Uh, they was in a little town, a little Greek town in Palestine. The Grecian came along uh, and, uh, and uh, they heard uh, Jesus was in town. And they said to the disciples, they said, Peter, we know who you are. But we did not come to see you. Uh, we want to see Jesus. If they don't mind, look at our neighbor and say, neighbor, I want to see God. I, 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 I want to see his face. And then when I see him, uh, and then I see myself. Ain't God all right? Uh, ain't he all right? When you look at him, won't he change you? I said, when you look him in his face, won't he change who you are? I need to see your hand tonight. Uh, if you can say, I'm not the same old person as I used to be. Can you say he made a change? He made a change in me. Things I used to do. I, I, I don't do no more. Places I used to go. I don't go anymore. I used to lie. I used to lie every time. I, 
I open my mouth, but I don't like it anymore like I used to. Oh, yeah. Did it change you? Shake a neighbor hand and say, neighbor, I know I've been changed. I know I've been changed. Oh, I know I've been changed because the angels in heaven uh, the sign my name. Uh, whoa, yes. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. <laughs> Do you know it's all right? Is it anybody here tonight can say I know he brought me through some days I know I couldn't have made it up by myself? Say yes. Did he watch over you last night? Did he shake you early this morning? You got out of your bed, put your clothes on, Oh, hey, yeah. Ain't he all right? Say yeah. Say yes. Say yes tonight. Come on and say yes for him. Oh, yeah. It was the year that other died. I didn't mean, I didn't mean, I didn't mean, I didn't mean. I didn't mean to hold you. I didn't, didn't mean. I declare I didn't mean to hold you. But I know I've been changed. I'm not what I ought. I'm not what I ought to be. But I'm not what I used to be. Then the Lord changed you. You know, that's something to shout about. I said, then the Lord changed you. Then the Lord changed you. Then he changed you. Now tell the truth, don't you lack some folks that you used to couldn't stand? Come on, don't lie to me. Since you saw God, don't you speak to some folks that you used to wouldn't want to speak to? Yeah, don't you love some people that you couldn't stand? I've been changed. I, I've been changed. I'm doing this for me now. I, I, I've been changed. I've been changed. Oh, I've been changed. I've been changed. I've been changed. I got a new walk. I got a new talk. I got new friends. I got a new mind. A new heart. I got new inspiration. I got new aspiration. I got new information. I got new destination. I got a new determination. Ain't he all right? Hey, 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 I'm trying to turn this thing loose now. 
You know, I ain't got nothing to do with you. If you don't want to move, it on you. But he put a running in my feet, clapping in my hand. Joy, 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 joy in my heart. Ah! <laughs> oh, yes. We've been made endure but a night. Joy coming in the morning. Won't he work it out? Won't he turn it around? Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh. God Almighty here. Yes, he will. I've been through a lot. I've been through the storm and the rain. I've had heartaches. I've had pain. But through it all, through it all, I learn, I learn, I learn, I learn how to lean on Jesus. Yeah. Are you leaning on him? Are you leaning on him? He will change. He will change him. He will. Yes, he will. You keep going to church. You keep on going to church. You keep on serving the Lord. You keep on serving the Lord. No matter what the world no matter what the world say, no matter what the world do, you keep on serving him, keep on going to church, keep on telling the story, keep on, keep singing in the choir, keep serving on the usher, whatever you're doing, keep on doing it. One of these, one of these old days, I don't know when it will be, but one of these old days, bless you, the door is open for the receptions on members of our letter of our Christian experience, our candidate baptism <clears throat> you might want to reunite with the church if you don't have a church home and you wish to come to make Jesus I don't want y'all to be worried about on Thursday Sunday when you see people leaving they're on their way to the prison ministry so you won't be thinking something is wrong and Amen. it might give you the in inclination to, yeah, to oh, I check up your own fire something get out of here, other folk leave it. They go into the prison ministry. That's where Reverend Pettis is going. Amen. And you can come while the blood is running warm in your vein. From right where you are. The door of this church is open. Maybe you want to reunite with the church. Maybe you don't have a church. Maybe you want to come a candidate for baptism or you want to come by letter Christian experience. You've been, been everybody else's time before but it's your time now. Will you come from right where Thank you. 
thank you, Lord. The door is open. Thank that one. 